A very, very warm welcome back to Six Ashes for episode 37 with me, Mr. Sealy P. Continuation, day two, early autumn, the sky is looking foreboding and it suddenly dawned on me, I hadn't been around to top up the um, allotment the, for the greenhouses and I haven't done the manure and, well the water doesn't look too bad but I'm going to top it up anyway. But manure for the fruit fruit trees, uh, so I'm going to crack on with that. Poplars are looking fantastic, they're just not quite there yet. But we are getting there. Possibly over the winter they'll be ready, which is not a problem. Um, and that's what I can, I'm kind of looking towards. I've got a load of wood chips stored, which I prepared before, you might remember, all the time I spent. Sold a load last year and then got a load more in there just in case, because you never know. And then the plan is over the winter, when the poplars are ready to harvest, we're going to clear those. We should get the prices rise over the winter, so we should get a, a decent price at some point. I think anywhere up around, I don't know, one, three, one, four, maybe. If I can get up around that, then I'll sell everything I've got. That's the plan. So, yeah, that's where we're at. That's what I'm kind of thinking. I hope. We'll see what happens. It's been busy, been busy the last few days. Thank you to everyone for their support and kind kindness and lovely messages for uh, Christmas, etc. It's been very, very nice. Obviously, there's been no mods, so there's been nothing else to put there, and the videos I've been putting up have been a bit kind of random and haphazard. Um, I sound like a lot of YouTubers for me personally, because I've got my family, and most of my family still live at home with me. And with all the various lockdown rules and being in tier four now and that kind of stuff we've tried to make the best of what we could we've had a lot of family time and a lot of nice stuff been going on which has been absolutely fantastic um so i know the videos haven't been coming out as regularly or as many and that kind of thing but for all those people that are watching them still watching them still supporting me the channel thank you so much i, I really do appreciate that massively um and then we'll uh yeah move into the new year and See what happens next, who knows? That's what we'll do now. Should I do? Oh, I'll do, yeah, do the media first, first then come back and do the water. This is another one of those jobs that you kind of. I, I do worry sometimes that I get into the habit of t jobs. I know some people feel that watching the same jobs over and over again gets a bit mundane and a bit boring. Um, and then there's another group of people who kind of, you do stuff and then they're asking me, and quite rightly, what about the fruit trees? What about the animals? What about you haven't shown you, you just you cleaning them out? You haven't shown us mucking out the animals, feeding them, anything like that. And I kind of shy away from doing jobs like that over and over because I don't want people to get bored of me doing it. But then there is some merit. I've, I've said quite a few times now, I know I'm getting a bit repetitive. It's the day-to-day -day farm work. It's the stuff that, you know, as I'm bouncing through the year, and this year we're flying through, you know, we're getting the jobs done. We can, what's available, we're getting done. We've built up to a point now where we've got all these different things we can do. And it is the maintenance. It's that ticking over. And at the moment, we're just kind of waiting on harvest, really. Which is quite scary. But anyway, I shall see you. I'm not sure when. Day three, maybe? Day four? We'll see. Potentially with a harvest to do. So, it's day four, mid-autumn. And as you can tell, it's windy today. I've, it's, I've never really noticed it. Well, it went through most of last year. But if we check the, um, check the weather... Wind speeds 25.6 going up to 31, 30.4. It is a blustery day. Now I have a massive problem. Go across one. I've lost all my planting data. I don't know when I can plant, when I can harvest. It's all gone. Uh, I don't know why. I've tried 
saving the game coming out of the game coming back in again i've tried saving the game coming out closing down the entire console i've done all sorts of stuff i'm having problems with the pigs sometimes if you introduce a new mod if you install one and bring a new mod in sometimes the animal paints can play up and you can get a different the wrong animals in there and as you'll notice top right corner the money's gone down massively and that's what's happened here is that my horses are now showing as different to what i've actually got so my black arabian and yeah it's, my pigs are all mixed again but what will often happen with that is save the game come out come back in again and it rectifies itself because once the the system recognizes that that new mod is no longer a new mod it's all good that hasn't happened i've been in and out of the game repeatedly now and i don't know what's caused the problem it's just all of a sudden it seems to have tripped out my other problem is this that two days ago <laughs> well, yeah so it was day two yeah day two mid-autumn i sold the old john deere and i bought a new harvester which i'm waiting to use but day four mid-autumn no harvesting my harvester has been sat here at the store the new holland dealership did me a really good deal on it we've got a cr690 that is being sold through the store from rick black label twd modding i've got a crisoni header i like those because i don't like mucking around with header trailers that one is i think i went for a 6.6 .6 on that and that's by smi modding team and then i've got a standard in-game uh, corn header uh why has mine gone blank as to what it is that's terrible Com uh, literally complete blank as soon as i click on this i'll remember capello yeah i've got a capello i think it's only a six meter corn header that's why the money's gone down a huge amount but that's not a problem so yeah if we go onto this menu and let me look across nothing is ready to harvest what i'm more concerned is i've gone through a couple of day cycles these fields here that have been on light green don't seem to have moved at all either. So I did panic and think, did I or have I put on precision farming by mistake? I haven't. I haven't got the equipment available to do precision farming, so that's not installed. I, I just don't know what's happening. I really don't. That wind is mad. It's quite distracting so yeah uh, I all I've been doing each day going through my cycles of cleaning the animals out feeding the animals exercising the horses making sure everything's topped up I could have picked up a few contracts here and there but I haven't done my poplars are still growing but they again I'm just a bit concerned that everything has stopped because that menu has vanished I'm now wondering whether or not it doesn't know when it's supposed to harvest and i don't know why it's doing it <laughs> if you're watching gb help yeah uh so i've been through checked all the menus went through and checked on here everything's exactly how it was i i just don't know so what i'm going to do is exercise my horses for today and then, I, I don't know, I'll skip through to day five and hopefully we'll get... As soon as I get on the horse, look. It's fine, it goes back to how it should be. So what I've been doing rather than exercising around here, I've been going out into the fields and just getting out and about a little bit more. It's just a bit nicer. So, uh, yeah, that's what I'll do. I will see you day five, late autumn, and... Uh, I don't know. I don't want this to be the end. I don't want this to have caused such a massive problem. And I don't know what it is that's done it. But it is frustrating, to say the least. It's day five. It's late autumn. We are on the brink of disaster. I seem to spend my life yo-yoing between really massive highs where I'm really pleased with what's going on and then 
potential disaster. I managed to sort out the problem with regard to that menu. We got it back and it was entirely my fault. It was nothing to do with the map, um, Six Ashes, uh, Geo, nothing at all. I had installed a second Geo, not on this map specifically. I was going to do, I was trying to set up a Christmas special um, and I put a Snowy Lands one on. When I came back onto here, I forgot to deselect it. So it was clashing with the two. So the Snowy Lands one was showing nothing for harvesting or planting because it's, it doesn't have it on there. It took me ages to realise what I'd done. But that's sorted. Here's the problem. We're on day five. Our harvesting of our corn and our soybean, which are our last two crops that we need to get in. We've got one day left. If we go to the map and have a look, just to torment me, field 30, which doesn't belong to me. Field 53, which doesn't belong to me. I think that one is soybean. That one's corn. They're ready to harvest. Mine aren't. So my soybean in 21, 22 and 16 isn't ready. My corn in 51 isn't ready. Which means I'm looking into day six, maybe. But then we get the next problem. Go across the weather. Today, we're supposed to be getting more rain. Although the weather forecast has changed. That's good. Because tomorrow was showing a bit of snow and then rain later on. Now it's saying sunny. So potentially then, if my crop is ready tomorrow, we should be able to get it in. The horses, I've been keeping up with their daily exercise and they are looking fit as a butcher's dog. All looking very, very good. I think one of them's up to 99% fitness and one's on 93. So another day they should both be very fit and everything should be looking good. So that's all working out very nicely. My beef stock are up to just under 1,200 kilos, no not kilos, pounds. Hang on. I always forget. I don't know why I always forget. Uh, cattle pasture, yeah, 1,145 pounds. They need to be between 1,200 and 1,400 roughly for selling on. So that's given me another idea. If I do hit that magic number in day six, late autumn, or day one of early winter, I might sell them and replace them with a dairy herd. And there's a, a logic to that, I think, in that they won't start producing milk until after nine months when they have given birth to their first calf. So what I can do is keep them over there, feed them and stuff through the winter, and that could be the kind of winter field. If we do all right with wood chip, which I'm hoping we're going to do over the winter, and we've got enough money to buy the other dairy farm, we'll then transfer our dairy herd up here to the dairy farm. And then they'll start producing milk up here at the dairy farm. That's what I'm thinking at the moment. Whether that works out or not, we will see. That's the plan. So, fingers crossed on that. No, turn that off. Not that one. That one. As you can see, I'm doing a bathing contract on field 66. I spent yesterday, day four, some of day four, doing fertilising contracts. And I cleared, pretty much cleared the board. If we go across to our contracts page, uh, yeah, so pretty much all we've got left now is baling contracts and a couple of transport, one cultivator at the bottom. All the fertilising jobs I took on and did. This one pays out quite well. Any surplus silage bales from this contract, I am taking to the biogas plant because I want the digestate. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing. That's where we're at. I know it's kind of, I've bounced through very, very quickly through autumn simply because there was nothing for me to do. I, I, like I said in the previous couple of um, segments you've just seen I've been waiting on crops and in the time I've been waiting on crops I've been finding jobs to do which has mostly been caring for my animals I then decided you know what rather than skipping through a whole other day I'll do some fertilising jobs which I did and then today I thought in a brief period of not having any rain because as you can see the rain cloud is up there we are going to get more rain if I can get this done and bailed and a load of these bales taken up to the biogas plant, I'll make a bit of extra money on top of the contract and we'll get some digesting. So, yeah, I, know, I, I think it's a, personally, it's a bit of a win-win. I don't mind spending the time doing it. 
I'm also had a bit of a thought. Happy New Year, by the way. Happy New Year, everybody. <laughs> Completely forgot about that. Happy New Year. That I am my next Let's Play. I've already got an idea of where I want to go. And it won't be any surprise to anybody. I'm not going to say yet. Yeah, it won't be a surprise. Well, I wouldn't have thought it would be a surprise. Because there's a bit of, an, for me, a bit of nostalgia to it. However, in the meantime, between then, I might do a short run series. And again, this is this is a kind of test in the waters thing. I don't think it's going to go down very well. But I'm, I'm going to jump onto Eureka Farms, you know. Because I want to... Normally I do mod reviews on maps, and I've done a few for TNT modding. And so look, this is all the equipment, or this is some of the equipment, or this is what TNT's put in. All this kind of zany bonkers stuff that PC normally have, that we've managed to get. And then that's it. I kind of walk away from it and go, okay, yeah, I've done my mod review, or map tour, and that's it, done. I've never, I don't actually ever use any of it. I might call it Goham Farms, I don't know. I hope DJ's not, I mean, yeah. We all know what DJ's like. I might call it Go Home Farms. I know it's Eureka Farms, but... So I might jump over there and do a short run using all of the bonkers zany equipment. Just have a go at... It's not something I normally do, you know, using the big stuff with wide pickups and faster speeds and all that kind of thing. I'm just curious. But again, it's going to be a case of whether or not... I, people aren't going to... There'll be a cross-section of people that aren't happy about it. But I'm thinking, new year, try something different, have a go, see what happens. If it's great, great. If it's not, it doesn't matter. Like I say, it will only be a short run one until I get to a point where um, the map that I want to move on to next after here, or in conjunction with, or I don't really know how I'm going to go about that yet, is, um, is ready. But yeah, we'll see. There are a couple I've got my eye on at the moment. So, yeah, don't know. But I'll see you later on. Hopefully, I'll be able to get that harvester out. Actually use the harvester. That would be amazing, wouldn't it? That's only been sat there now, what, three days at the store? Should have gone and collected it, really. It's not doing any harm there. It's in their showroom and they're quite happy showing it off, so... Oh, it's good. Warning, the rest of this episode contains mild despair. Although, I'm at the main farm, as you can see, or CJ Farms, we've got a new shed has been built. Fits in rather nicely. Put my sewing and fertilising gear in here, the trailer around the side has been converted, ready for harvest. However, if we go on to here, guess what? None of my stuff is ready to harvest. At all. It's gone lunchtime, and the ground is still too damp. It's still saying it's got one growth cycle left to go, it's at 67% growth. It's saying it's at 40% crop moisture, and I was really hoping that it would get to lunchtime, it would warm up a little bit, and that crop moisture symbol next to the sun would disappear, but nothing. I reckon I'm going to lose this entire crop, but the flip side of that, is we've got a great demand at the sawmill. Look, great demand for wood chips. It was just as well that I put all those wood chips away. Uh, poplars obviously still aren't ready to harvest yet, but I'm taking advantage of that, and I'm doing it now. Why not? I'm going to sell as much as I can while the great demand's on. I honestly... I'm not intentionally dragging out this whole harvest situation. I really I really want to get my crops in. I want to get my corn and my soybean done. I want to use my new harvester. This could be disaster if I lose all my crop. If I get into tomorrow, day one, early winter, that's it. They'll all wither. I won't, I won't be able to do anything with them. I don't think I will. I don't think I've ever seen one go outside of the harvest window and it'd be okay. Once it clicks over midnight, I'm going to lose the crop. So unless something miraculous happens between now and well, even when it gets dark, up till midnight, let's just say that, we have got a real problem. Poplars are looking fantastic. So whatever I sell now, I will then be replacing with poplars. So we will be using the poplar header on a forage harvester and we'll be wood chipping all of that. I've just suddenly realised over the last couple of days I don't think I put any more manure 
on the fruit trees. So as it stands at the moment, that new harvester has, has been a complete waste of money. Although that said, our money dropped right down. What we've been earning from our fruit trees, from the fisheries, from the allotments, from a few contracts we've done, we went from just over, was it 147,000 we were on? Back up to 297. And that's on doing a few contracts and the stuff we've been earning from, from what we've kind of paid out, what we've outlaid already. So I'm quite happy with that. We're making money. The cows aren't quite there yet. Our beef stock... Beef stock makes it sound like gravy, doesn't it? If we look at our beef, they're at £1,197. Not quite at the 1200 But I'm going to try and knock them further up towards 1400 before I sell them. The horses, Tartarus and Estabella, are at 100% health, 100% fitness, 100% cleanliness. They've been ridden today. Both of them are doing splendidly. So... Our situation, our system, is working nicely. We're getting animals that need a little bit of care and have got some injuries and problems, and we're nursing them back to health. Yeah, the trees have lost their fruit, which means they've run out of water, and we've run out of manure. I need to get back on that. I'm trying to keep up with the animals and everything else, and completely forgot about the fruit trees, so that'll be something else I'll do. Like I've said earlier, in, the, in all the segments prior to this, and they've been recorded at different times, and obviously on different days with regard to the game itself. I'm going to get around there. I always ask that question, don't hey? Just a little bit too tight. Could just go through the hedge, I suppose. So like saying, so while we've got the great demand on, I'm going to, over 2,000 for a 1,000 litres, I'm going to absolutely steam it and get as much out as I possibly can. We will do a harvest at some point, I just don't know when. Maybe next year now. Whatever happens, we'll get a poplar harvesting, because they won't wither. And they can be harvested all year round, so we will be doing the poplars at some point. We just may lose our crop. A few people have been asking about precision farming and why we're not doing it. In all honesty, it's not ready. I... It, no, hang on. Let's switch that to tip side back. Do that again. There we go. Yeah, there, I, I've had so many reports and a little bit of playing around with it kind of off camera. There are a few issues and problems, not least of all the fact it's trying to work and be compatible across standard maps, mod map, well, that's pretty good, mod maps, mod maps that have not got any precision farming gear on and mod maps that have been converted to take precision farming. You've then got the situation with regard to contracts and it's still not working properly with the contract system. I've got people reporting that they're having no problems whatsoever with precision farming and it's absolutely fantastic and they love it. I've got other people saying that it's been an absolute nightmare. They're falling short on every single contract they do. Um, I've had reports of people saying there they've got all their data is there. Then they save the game, come out, come back out, all, uh, come back on and all the data's gone. They're having to resoil sample. And it's just not, it just doesn't seem to be working as it should. It's a minefield enough as it is, and to try and find any relevant data or anything that's going to stay standard and relevant is hard enough when something is complicated but working properly. If it has got a few issues, that makes that so much more difficult. So, I, whether it will get an update or not, I don't know. It should at some point. I may well do a series with precision farming, but I'm not going to be doing that just yet. What I am concerned about is making enough money to buy the other dairy farm. Which was what I'm aiming at. And the, the, the silly thing about all of this is, it's the last couple of episodes have been a little bit bitty, and it's been I've been waiting for the harvest, and I've been wanting to get things done. And every time I've gone to, and I've gone a day, and then there's been no harvest, I've gone another day, no harvest, and I'm thinking to myself, you know what, do what you're doing. Record what you're doing, record what you, you know, this is the day-to-day, -day, this is the farming stuff you're getting up to, get that done. But I know, once the harvest is ready, 
and we get on with the harvesting, then we've got the collecting of it all, then we've got the storing or selling of it all, then we've got the repurposing in the fields, whether it's liming, whether it's cultivating, whether it's ploughing, and then there'll be a ton of jobs to do. Then before you know it, winter will be on us, the poplars that we're ready to harvest will be doing a pop. There's so much that needs to be done. The problem I've got at the moment is it's all hinging on the harvest, which as it stands at the moment just hasn't happened. So, and then weirdly, the same as it was last year, when I was getting to that point, I'm thinking, well, okay, what do I do now? Bang, I get a great demand pop up. For wood chip, which I've got plenty of, again, I'm not scrabbling around saying, thinking, right, I need to make wood chips. Another great reason why I prepped and did a load and put them into storage. So when a great demand comes up, bang, you're on it straight away. So, yeah, I don't know. The harvest situation is frustrating, but it's what it is. If I can make my money doing this and buy the other dairy farm sooner than I thought, rather than buying the dairy cows to replace our beef animals, I might just be able to buy them and put them straight in at the other dairy farm. Maybe that's something we could do over the winter and then we can get them going. Yeah, don't see why not. So what I'm going to do now is spend a bit of time selling these. And I'm going to keep a very, very close eye on this to see if anything changes. If it doesn't, that would have been such a waste. Then all I'll be doing is cultivating a withered crop in, which is not how I wanted it to go. But, there we go. Moving on. It's five past three in the afternoon. The wood chips are all sold. Every single one. I've got none left. Where is it? Oh, what was on it already? Yeah, zero. Nothing. The other thing as well, I meant to say, the um, bailing contract I was doing on field 66, I had 88 bales in total. 59 I delivered uh, as part of the contract, which gave me 29 to take to the biogas plant. With the other contracts I've already done at the biogas plant, I'm now sitting on 84,800 litres of digestate, which I can access at some point. Now, it is, as I just said, nearly 10 past three. Crop moisture has gone. Air temperature's eight degrees, ground temperature's four degrees, and my crops are not ready to harvest. I honestly think I'm just gonna have to accept the fact I'm a livestock farmer, and not an arable farmer. I seem to be doing alright with the livestock. I mean, to be fair, doing the cows, doing the, the sheep are no problem at all, because that's all stuff I can do with the ground, all my grass work and silage and straw and things like that I've taken from other people's contracts. Although that said, I had that harvest contract last season on field nine where I got all my straw from. I haven't had that come up this year either. It's weird how they seem to be, some pop up, some don't. So, I don't know what to do now. For the best, sun's starting to dip again. 
It's getting well, starting to get dark. And we'll be heading into winter. I suppose what I need to do now then is I'll go and grab some more manure, of which I have absolutely loads from my animals. I'll bring some back over, sort out the greenhouses at the honey pot allotments, sort out the fruit trees just here. And then when the poplars are ready, that will replenish my wood chip stock, but I have cleared myself out. We are sitting on 1,651,799. Uh, what we'll probably do in the next episode, depending on what happens with the harvest situation, we could have some ploughing and cultivating and various different things to do, is we'll put an offer in on the other dairy farm. And then I'll think about, we'll get the dairy cows in up there, we might as well, rather than putting them in at CJ farms and transferring them up. Although what I am going to have to do is transfer a load of my top mix ration that I've got in storage, so we might have to have a new bunker silo, not bunker silo, a silo, maybe a silo extension put in, and then we'll transfer a whole load of top mix ration up there to the other dairy farm so we've got enough feed on hand for the cows up there. That's the plan moving forward. This happened a little bit sooner than I thought. I honestly thought we wouldn't get a great demand this year. And if we did get a really good price, it would be during the winter. Then in the spring, we'd move to the other dairy farm. As it's turned out, having the great demand now has brought all of that forward by quite a bit. I'm so... I can't believe these fields. It's, I just... I keep checking like every 20 minutes, hoping all of a sudden it's going to flip over and they'll be ready to go. I suppose the time will tell. If you see me in the next episode really happy with the harvester and all of a sudden something's happened, I'm still on day six, late autumn, but it's late in the day, great. If you don't, and when I appear, it says day one, early, early winter, then <laughs> you'll know we've probably got a load of ploughing and cultivating to do. I'm going to put this... I want to take this up here, don't I? Because I'm going to put manure in it to go and sort the fruit trees. But anyway... We have come to the end of another episode. And as I've said a few times now, it's interesting how you set plans in motion and things you think in your head are going to be how it's going to be. And then unfortunately, nature, the wind, the weather, just has other ideas. You can't do anything about that. So what we'll do is crack on with this. If you have enjoyed it, if you are still enjoying it, give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.